how can we make the subject of this image stand out with a bit of Lightroom editing? The answer is masks. It's always masks. So if you want to follow along this tutorial, feel free to download the raw file from the link in the description of this video. And now let's jump into it. The very first thing we need to do is to merge the HDR image since we're dealing with a lot of contrast with the highlights in the sky and the dark shadows in the foreground. So down below you can see I'm selecting these five images, right click on one of them, go to photo merge and choose HDR. I'm not changing anything here, just hit the merge button and after a quick moment we can work on this HDR file. So the problem with this image is we do have a great looking sky, but it's way too bright, while the subject in the foreground is rather dark. We want to find a nice balance between those things. So let's start this in the basic panel. For this image, I did struggle a lot and it took me quite a while to find the right settings. But in this case, I don't want to change the profile. I also don't want to adjust the white balance because these things would not make the image look better. What I want to do is I want to drop the highlights all the way down and we can nicely do that because we are working with an HDR image and dropping the highlights like this will reveal all these beautiful colors in the sky, which we want to have. Now I also want to bring up the shadows, but I'm just raising them very gently because raising them too much will give us this ugly HDR look. And that's not what we want. So let's just bring the shadows up a notch right around here. And I also want to bring up the blacks. Here, since we're targeting a more subtle range of tones, we can bring up the blacks a little more. Even with the blacks at nearly 70 points, the image doesn't get this ugly HDR look applied. So this is looking pretty good. I do want to show you the before and after real quick so you can see the difference in the highlights and the shadows by adjusting just three sliders in Lightroom's basic adjustments. This makes a huge difference already. But we can do a little more here. I do want to add some texture which will make everything a little sharper. I'm not going to touch the clarity or the dehaze. I don't think these two add anything to this image at this point. What I want to do is to add a little bit of vibrance but again, just a tiny amount, right around five points here. The basic adjustments did help quite a lot, but the subject is still not prominent enough for my taste at this point. There are still a few problematic areas. So one area which is really, really bothering me are, are these blue mountains in the back. That color cast is way too much and it kind of drives the eye away from the church in the center. So. That's the next thing I want to fix. And just like I said in the intro, we are going to use some masking to get this shot look right. So let's go ahead, open up the masking panel. And to target these bluish mountains in the back, we're going to use a range mask. To be more precise, we're going to use a color range mask. And with the eyedropper active hovering over the image, I'm just clicking right in here in these blue mountains. Of course, we do have some more things selected than needed. So I am going to say subtract and let's choose a brush. And I'm going to paint over this path leading up to the church. And of course, we also want to subtract with the objects mask. Make sure the rectangle select is activated and then just draw a rectangle around the church. And you can see this way we get a really good mask for the mountains in the back. I do want to subtract one more brush because there are clouds selected in the top in the sky. And of course, we don't want to change them. So let's just get rid of them. That's looking good. Now let's fix that color cast. And that's really simple. Since we're, since we're dealing with the cold blue color cast, all we need to do is to bring up the white balance temperature into the yellow range. And thus we're reducing the blue tint of the mountains. So I want to go with something like this and immediately it looks much, much better, but it's still not perfect. Again, we want to separate the subject from the background. And to do that, I want to make the background darker by bringing down the shadows. I'm going to drop them quite a bit like this. I'm also going to drop the blacks 
adding even more contrast to this area. So right around here. And this is looking much, much better already. Let me show you as I deactivate this mask from before to after. Much better. There might be some haloing going on around the church or some of these trees. I guess you could be a little more precise with the masking, but for the purpose of this video, let's just keep on going. Now I want to use a linear gradient and what I'm going to do is to select the whole foreground like this and I'm going to say subtract. Now we're going to choose a color range mask again and let's click right in here. This way we are getting rid of the blue mountains in the back from the selection of the foreground and thus we can just nicely target the foreground area. Now the color range mask did not select everything so we need to adjust it a little further. I'm holding down the shift key and I'm clicking right in here to add another point for the color range mask. And that's looking much better but still we need to subtract a brush and let's just roughly brush around in the image where there are still a few red areas visible. Okay, I'm happy with this selection. Now let's see what we can do here. I want to further separate the subject from the background. So the first thing for me is to make this area brighter. I'm going to slightly bring up the exposure. I'm also going to slightly increase the highlights. Let's also raise the whites. And again, I want to use some extra temperature, trying to eliminate any bluish color cast down here. So let's bring the temperature up to around 15, just like that. And we're done with this mask. Now at this point, we could also work on the sky. So let me create a simple sky selection mask. Not sure why Lightroom is selecting the foreground like that, but I'm going to subtract the linear gradient and let's just cover the foreground like this. Now what I want to do in here is to bring down the highlights a little further to get out a little more detail out of the sky. So just around here looks good to me. Okay, I still think the upper part of the image is lacking contrast. And to fix that, I'm going to use a linear gradient and I'm covering pretty much the upper half of the image like that. And what I want to do is to simply bring down the blacks. So the highlights of this area won't be affected, only the darker areas. And this will add some really nice punch. Now I want to further work on the subject. I'm going to create an objects mask one more time and draw the rectangle around our church. What I want to do in here is I want to bring up the highlights. I also want to bring up the whites. And I want to increase the temperature a little more. And the reason for me to do that is I want the color of the church to kind of match the color of the sky. This way it works quite nicely together and it just makes the image look a little more pleasing. So this is looking good. I want to further work on the subject. I'm going to use a luminance range mask for that. Let's click right here in the subject. And we want to modify the luminance range. I pretty much only want to target the brightest highlights. So let's filter out all the dark areas like this. Of course, now we have the top part selected as well, but don't worry, we can simply click on those three dots, choose intersect mask with and choose brush. And then just brush over the church. And here we have a perfect selection for the highlights in the subject. Now what we want to do is we want to bring up the exposure. So right around here and I want to bring up the whites and this just adds more contrast between the subject and the dark mountains in the back. In other words, the subject becomes more visible in front of these dark mountains. Uh, we can further increase this effect with a simple linear gradient and I want to cover the foreground like this. And I want to make this area dark with, without underexposing. So what I'm doing for that is to bring down the whites all the way, which will make the area darker, but it won't underexpose the darkest areas. So by applying this mask, we get a very subtle vignetting effect. And again, we're leading the viewer's eye more towards the subject. And then let's create one more color range mask for the mountains in the back. And I want to subtract the sky. 
and I want to click on those two dots, go to intersect mask width and choose linear gradient. Now I'm going down towards the bottom like this. And by doing this, we are only selecting the top part of the mountains in the back, which I now want to make a little more interesting. Again, I'm doing this by adding contrast. So I'm going to bring down the blacks. So let's say minus 30 should be enough. I also want to bring up the clarity slightly to get a little more structure in these mountains. But I'm quite happy with how this is looking. In fact, I think we're done with the masking. So let's take a look. That was our image with just some basic adjustments applied. And here we have the image with the masking added on top. You can see how the subject is nicely standing out. Plus we have all this nice detail in the sky. This is looking great. Now all that's left to do is a bit of color grading. So let's go ahead, open up the color mixer. I do want to bring down the blue luminance just a bit, making the blue parts of the image darker. And I also want to bring down the blue saturation. Okay, then let's go ahead, open up the color grading panel for some split toning, start with the highlights. And of course, for the highlights, we want to keep adding warm tones. So I'm going to set up the hue to something very warm right here in the orange range around 20. And I'm going to increase the saturation quite a bit, right around 50. All right, that adds some really good looking color to the sky. Now I also want to work on the midtones again, applying a warm color tone to them. So again, setting up the hue and let's bring up the saturation. Very important to not go too high with the saturation of the midtones. Otherwise this will look weird really, really fast. And then let's also apply some color for the shadows. And with the shadows, we can add some color contrast. So we want to add a cold color tone, bring up the hue to somewhere around here and very carefully add some more saturation. Wonderful. This is a rather subtle change, but it really helps to stylize an image like this. Finally, let's take a look in the calibration tab. And what I want to do in here is to bring down the blue primary hue, which will shift all the colors of the image slightly. And in turn, we just get a more intense red color in the sky, which I like for this scene. And I'm going to bring up the saturation some more. Wonderful. So we are pretty much done with this image. And just one or two more things. One, there is a chromatic aberration along the mountain top. So we can try to fix that in the lens corrections tab here. Make sure to check remove chromatic aberration. And what I want to do as well is some sharpening in the details tab. So let's open up the details panel, bring down the radius, increase the details, hold on the OK while applying some masking so, that, so we can see where the sharpening will be applied and now bring up the amount of sharpening. Okay, of course you already have spotted a few of those sensor spots, so let's remove them as well. I'm going to click on the remove tool here we want to choose the heal mode. And if you want, you can click on visualize spots. I don't think it's necessary for this image. So I'm just going to paint over all these ugly sensor spots. Just to be safe, let's activate the visualize spots mode. And this looks clean. So that's the finished image. I hope this little Lightroom tutorial about separating the subject from the rest of the image was helpful and interesting. Of course, if you have anything to add or want to know anything about the editing process, let me know in the comments and thank you so much for watching this video.